Hello and welcome back for another one of our World Cup Design playthroughs and we have two more left in my personal queue and then I'm on top of all of them which would be lovely. Um, at the moment we've got Bullets Bend which is from Group E so that's the same as Wasquam Set Club um, and here's noted play from Black Tees which we will do. Let's go random pin we're going to go I've eh, done three a lot recently let's go four. Um, any wind conditions are fine. Default wind speed preferable, of course. Um, fairways to max firmness because it's highlands. Yes, that, that glitch still exists. So very firm. Uh, let's go southeast, medium, and I'm also going to set greens to firm because I'm never totally sure whether that happens as well. Um, now, I pay particular attention to green sites, slopes, and best fairway positions to get a respective pins. Of course, feel as open as possible to use to other areas of the course throughout. Minimal planting in spite of... Oh, raw, In spite of comfortably reaching 100% metre. On difficulty, not 100% sure, but... Oh my goodness, we've written a lot. I would say medium to... Medium difficult, fine. Uh, of course, inspired by an area just... <laughs> just south of Bandon Dunes, not necessarily based on the courses there. Ah, uh, this is interesting. Also some influence from a recent round at Burnham and Barrow. I was a member there for five years so i know that well it inspired some of the green sites and contouring well we like that right let's give this a play and while we're starting up i'll answer some of the questions from chat just as there are a couple coming in as we're loading up uh, next design contest should be being announced i think in the next week or so that's with matt f27 who's going to run that one um but yeah keep keep your eyes peeled for that uh right so we have links and we have an expansive sort of links course it kind of mounds its way through dunes uh, we do have coastline i will say that the bright green rough going straight into the coast it, it maybe looks a little odd for some reason i can't quite work out why i think it's the rough texture you're using is very green compared to the more typically dulled out highlands ones that's my only guess but not a big thing um the muted lighting is working wonders here that's always helpful i like the little lookout point that's cool that is a uh, okay so we've got coastal stretch a little bit of a spit of land here that these two go on uh yeah this is in e so if you're in the same one with axel then that'd be it now, I've said this before with other courses that do the kind of island backdrop, which this is sort of doing with that little bit of water coming in here and on the other side. It can be very... I, I'd be really careful with this and creating... Yeah, uh, we were just saying how you suck. Um, creating water on all three sides is a little bit dangerous. It feels like a great idea, but actually it can often lead to an overuse of water or just kind of lends to you spreading out the routing a little bit too much so you can see we've got one here one here one here one there and you get an awful lot of coastal stuff i actually personally prefer it where you've just got the one side but you really maximize how you use it and that's kind of how i've evolved with this anyway because as you can see we've got like a little bit of inland and then everything else is coastal now without then if you are going to do this I would definitely avoid using internal water as well because and again these are i make these critiques having made these for lack of a better word mistakes like i've done all of this stuff myself um but personally on links courses the most interesting stuff tends to actually be away from the coast um so it'll be interesting to see how those bits are used the clubhouse looks nice that's it's fairly simple but it's done well and effectively um and we have some gorse and we have a little man here and is that the back tee or is all oh, right okay no that's what is this it's just a pitch to the screen interesting okay. carry on i will all right so a little bit of reverse camber big brain has some slopes and Probably got one of them, probably got the easiest pin of them on this. Now it looks like you're not going with light rough at all, which can work. It's 
potentially dangerous, but we'll see how we get. Uh, and we let's go find it. Yeah. Okay. So heavy rough. So hitting the fairway is going to be on a, be a premium, and I wanted to stick to the higher left side in order to get around that mound, which is that works well. It's pissing I knew you'd get that, Charlie. Perfect. Perhaps a touch challenging. Planting, I think you want to be tying this together a little bit more. So you can see we've got a really densely planted area, and you made a comment in the form about the meter. They're great, aren't they? Um, and part of why you're not hitting the high meter is because planting just feels a little bit unfinished. So, like, in a particularly in a contest, you might get away with this on other courses, but you can't really go for everything with the grasses through to nothing. You have to be putting in the legwork on these bits as well. And it will just make it feel much more immersive rather than, if we look back here, we've got a grass area followed by nothing. So, like, little bits. Um, okay, I've got an awful lie, and a pretty dreadful tempo because I'm sitting too far away. But it's a friendly green, there's no real trouble around it. little bit of awkwardness with the beads so you can see this one's going this way this one's going this way this way this way this way this is going to be something i'll end up pointing out a lot like it's really time consuming but you do want to um, you do want to try to smooth those out now the grasses you have used i really like um, my suspicion is they're multi-planted based on how they look which is not a in itself is not a knock, but you want to blend those with single planting to stop it looking like the dead circles. So circle, circle. And like what you've used is great, but like I say, you want to be dragging this out. If you look at some of the other courses with loads of grass planting, um, so for example, uh, have a look at Black Betty and how that does grass planting. Have a look at, uh, seeing as Duck is here, Chop, Match Club had a lot of grass on there. Like, look at the single planting there and how it ties the sides of the course together. Um, Maxwell Plantation, Quiet and Downs, those ones, they will have a lot of a lot of grass on them. Okay, five hundred yard par four. Love the green side. I love that we're not on the coast, but we're sort of there. I would have given a, I would have given more fairway behind the green before you go to the bunker. Um. That back bunker is kind of not really in play. I, I like it and I see why it's there because it's kind of a half shot penalty for going over the green. But honestly, I think, yeah, exactly. And you, you, it's when you're doing that sort of a, a course, you have to be really careful with it. I really like the green side. I do really like this bunker in relation to the green shape and the green side. I don't necessarily think the bunker, um, the green with lack of fairway behind it, works for a 500 yard par four into the wind admittedly i've drawn a bad luck with the wind i guess when you also chuck a central hazard in i think we're possibly are like we're just ramping up the difficulty maybe a tiny bit uh who is dr jones a either a bond villain or someone from an aqua song i think uh, but his adversaries are thank you ducker there we go uh, additionally, the green kind of slopes from front to back, which, you know what, on a long path four, I'm not, as long as it's not sloping away too harshly, I don't mind this because it helps you get a ball to a back pin. And as long as, to me, it, they may look like they're hurting ones, I feel these are both her helping slopes and that back pin. It's going to be a really fun one. Uh, the one I'm questioning more is this one where you've got a drop off and a drop off and we can't really run it in short and it's carry all the way just think with this one it's maybe a touch on the penal side but there's lots of good about it as well and actually i really the look the use of these little pines like these look so good love these trees and but the way you're using them and at the level of grass planting you're here the only thing I'd say with this is you've got like I'd spread these little bits out a little bit more so it doesn't look like they're just like there's clumping and then there's just 
kind of single planted plump or single spots of plumping. If that makes sense. Probably doesn't doesn't feel like it makes sense to me. But basically, just try to tie tie your planting together a lot rather than just have it look like you planted one area, then moved on, then moved on. The more you can randomize it, the better. Yeah, I mean, clumping has been a word. I know this is a really simple thing. But this hold is really visually pleasing. You frame this so well. Um, and it's little things like the use of the backdrop and the tree line just short of the backdrop and this little bit of planting here and this stuff here. So all the stuff you're doing here shows me that you absolutely know you're planting and framing you just need to do it more um, all over the plot now the hole itself kind of we've gone really close to the ocean and then we're not really using it I feel like the tee shot could be doing a little bit more for us because it is basic. Like that tee shot could exist anywhere else on the course. Yeah, Axel is good at not using the ocean and going really close to it. Um. Okay, so I've missed the fairway. So we're trying to hack one up there. If I can't reach, what are my options? Well, this little bit of fairway here could have come all the way out here. Would have been helpful. I like that you're winding it around the mounds here although they're not massively severe mounds lynx courses would go through that which does kind of lead me onto another thing your fairways are very well not very but they're pretty flat you could incorporate this into them um, this bunker is very penal this i think we could be offering a bit more of a bailout for someone who doesn't make the fairway especially when you know you're you're Kind of ramping up the t the pressure on a tee shot because yeah like there's no there's just no shot there other than laying back she had to, kissing her turn. there we go ducker you get this oh that's flown now i really like the green side right you've got it in the base of these little dunes now if you're like, given that you're knowing and referencing burnham and barrow this one is like your third green there so if you think about that and what makes that work everything funnels in really nicely but literally everything funnels in on that one and then you've got the dip in front of it it's also a wedge shot so this can work really nicely if you've hit the fairway however the things that are going to make this work a little less well are the runoff at the back like you've got it in this little amphitheater have it all run in like everyone loves r5 which you can potentially eagle I really do, but also can't be bothered. Also, shut up, Axel. Um, come on. Didn't get it remotely. Uh, easy two part. But yeah, I think having a bit of an idea of like. Yeah, that green that green site and the potential it offers, if you're putting it in a bowl, everything runs towards it. So what you could have done would have been to, like, let's say you have a green down here. I know we're going off tangent, on a tangent, and we're approaching it from this way. What I might consider doing is going, well, it's a bowl, therefore, if you reach over here, you are ending up somewhere on the green. So what I might do is do a disconnected fairway and say, well, but if you're short, sure, there's those mounds and they're kicking you over to here and then you're playing over. I'm, like, I'm accepting that this is always going to be a birdie hole, sometimes an eagle hole. But there's that fun of tempting people to hit there because they know the huge reward they're going to get if it's a punch bowl. Um, whereas if you kind of half do it, it gets a bit more punitive and people stop taking that, that fun shot on. Okay, this one. So we've got runoffs. What I do like that you've done here is the runoffs are not everywhere. Some parts it's coming on, some parts it's flat near the edge. I think this one's possibly a little bit severe. And that is very much a middle finger bunker. 
or something else, depending on how you view it. Um, for a six iron, I think I think this hold is probably about twenty yards too long. Back bunker is all excited. That's the other way you could look at it. Um, because you got the dip. Like you could have just softened this slope because it's. If you're landing it here, I would probably just soften it so you don't need the big kicker slope, I think. Or I'd have lost this and just allow people to play for the middle. There's just a little too much defending this one pin. Um, and again, like here is a fine pin for 150, for 175, it's maybe a little much. Uh, yeah, I think you just stretch this out 20 yards too far. Um, and planting wise, good bit needs more in front of it needs more cutting on here just it's a little empty and i probably don't think that bunker really adds anything it's a complete change to the previous hole if we look at this style of bunker and then we look at that big strip bunker and this one you've had here they've suddenly gone really traditionally shaped I don't really know why. At least that front one has. So I think commit to whatever bunker style you are going for and just be like, be happy with whatever that is. But consistency is good. We're going to go right at it because I think if I just de locked it a touch. Yeah. So you can, I mean, you can hit it. I think I'd allow that little play a bit more to the left of it, to the right of it. Even. Hold your head up. There we are. And as you can see, behind the green, the planting you've done looks good. I might mix a slightly deader grass in with that green one, but not necessarily. This is a cool green site. You definitely need this bunker. Well, or you could make... Actually, I'm not sure you do. I think I would probably be losing this one, but bringing the fairway in a bit tighter, something like that, and bring that bunker in. And then this bunker basically fulfills the function of this one. Um, you definitely don't need the two. Because that's taking out driver and... Well, they're both taking out driver. Because you could leave this driver and just go, here's your awkward, like flop shot up to a elevated green. I love the green side. I think it's really nice. I like that you've gone lengthways and given us the chop. And where you've cut the fairway, I think, is really good. Yeah. Um, oh, aren't we all friendly and loving in here? This isn't how contests should work. And then I can get that backstop. Yeah, I really like this hole. I think you can accomplish this runoff a little bit better. So you can see how it's kind of continuing the same sort of slope. What would work a little neater? Don't be like Matty. Yes, definitely don't be like Matty. That one's going to get a lot of mileage. Um, So try and flatten the green out to about this point where it's all still pinnable. And then from here, those three make that a really steep drop off followed by a bit more steepness kind of like you got here uh, but even more exaggerated and you'll just find it drops off much much better and gets you more pinnable space uh, both of which are beneficial mm, not my best shot but it should get us up there his eyes look scary that guy no i mean maybe matty but i meant my little avatar person Great time. Oh yeah, definitely is. All of them are. But that's fine. People should know what they're getting themselves in for. Plus, I've always found whenever I watch, like... Because I started by watching all of Andre's stuff on YouTube and then migrated to Twitch and I lurked on Twitch for a little while before actually starting and chatting. And like, watching people chatting and part of the community, like, that's the fun part that you want to be a part of. I should say that. Okay. Now, the slopes that are sort of here. 
So we got a relatively long par three. I think all of your par threes have been a bit long so far. But again, with this one, uh, anything where I'm encouraging you to really hit. This is a nice idea. Thanks, Jiza. Um, so anything where it's a long par three and you're asking people to bounce the ball in, try and make all of your slopes pretty much helping. Especially if you've got a funky green shape where you're asking people to land it short and work out when it hits the green, it's going to go at a different speed. Like that's asking a challenging question. So I think what I'm getting at is this dip here, lose that, make it flat, make it all run on, especially if the ball is running away to the back as well. I think this will play really nicely to a pin down here. Iffy to a pin here because that run off, like that's asking. It's a very tough question. Good question, but a tough question. Really tough to this one, really tough to this one. I think you could have just helped the player a little bit more of this. Especially as we're asked, we're giving us a three iron. Uh, I think I would also lose the back bunker. I don't really feel it's helping all that much. It's never going to roll into that unless you're massively hitting hard. It's unlikely to roll off the green and into this. And just the fact that you've had to prop it up. I would rather just see the water. I think that would look a lot better. In fact, it would look it would look much better. Yeah, do that. All right. Um, I still think I'm ending up on the back of the green with this. I don't really see a way to stop it anywhere near the hole. Because I just don't see where I land that. Yeah. Um, started out watching Mayday doing World Cup. Just hit back a golf shot. Um, Rory, I'd argue that is harsh feedback. Um, yeah, I started off watching Andre's World Cup playthroughs the year be before that. No, two years before that. And then, so when he did, you know, the Andre thing, he did like half of them and then gave up. Um, and then I watched, went back and watched Mayday's major ones. But yeah, and then lurked in Andre's stream and Matt's streams while they were doing CC courses and then eventually plucked up the courage to get, like, start talking to people. Even saw a Jiza stream, like, back when those were a thing. He did one stream, I think, on Aotearoa. My, oh, okay, par four, four, seven, seven. Jiza, Jiza did stream once upon a time. I think with this one, you've got the water low left. I would probably have the hill just come all the way through rather than having a dip down here. I think that would be neater. It is, you're working on your 18th green, I can tell you. And I really enjoyed it, and then you never streamed again. Uh, yeah, it was Strathlon, yeah. I love the Mayday playthroughs. Uh, my one critique is that he's too... Like, my one criticism, rather, from a learning point of view, is he's too nice. I, I, He didn't ever actually criticise a course as much as I would have liked, because I, I enjoyed learning from them. And with the World Cup ones he did that year, he was good in that he then eventually sent us all individual ones that he had done off-air. Exactly. Which is, which is great, but I feel we have other people for that. Like, my take on playthroughs is like this is the only time anyone ever gets actual critical feedback. So, if you want that, sign up for a contest. If you don't, don't. Um, but yeah, he did. He did do those playthroughs, but he just sent them separately. So I never got to. You never got to pick on any anyone else's. The Reeb playthroughs were great. Reeb has an amazing eye, and he wasn't afraid of calling out stuff he didn't like either. Um, yeah, and he's entertaining. I still remember his one for... I, I'll come back to this course in a second, sorry. Uh, his one for my rookie course, which was a solid enough course, but the things he pointed out on that were really useful because they were things that I just didn't see at that time. Anyway, this course, this hole, this course. Um, you have the water here. I wouldn't protect it with bunkers, although I don't... 
totally mind that you've done that. It just means the water's kind of there visually. And don't get me wrong, it's pretty. I really like how it looks. I just think it turns this into, a, as the golf hole stands, why is this any different to a standard relatively flat par four with two bunkers? No, you didn't. You sucked. Tottenham did. Because this par four could just exist anywhere else that... Uh, what, you mean in the fairway gets a bit more skinny? I don't really think it's doing anything more quirky necessarily. I do like the bunkers on the inside and I do like that it's slightly diagonal and it's choking down. I miss Tot. Um, yeah. I, know, I feel like we could use the natural land that we've got possibly a little more. Uh, right. This is a good green though. Like there's enough going on that makes it interesting and there's not enough there's not too much that it's overly wild. Uh, uh something like that, maybe. Oh yeah, that'll do. Now Jamie's not porting any horses. No. Um I mean I, I haven't really been pointing out, but you'll hopefully see now that I've pointed it out once the same thing is pre is present with the planting everywhere. Just like you've got these little patches, but you want to tie them together a little bit more than they are being currently because the grass is like sometimes sat surrounding everything, sometimes nothing. And like the more you can bleed it between the two or those areas, the better it will be. Hmm. That sounds good, Jamie. Okay. Drivable par four. I'm probably not with this wind. Why would I not go here? I feel like we've done a slightly different bunker style here again. I like these little pop sort of things. <laughs> 123. Um the green itself has a lot of interest. I can see why for this pin I maybe wouldn't. So I wouldn't want to chip over that. Although I probably still would just because I'd want to try something off the backstop and just have a fun shot. I think for this one, may as well. This whole, this whole corridor feels a little cramped. Um, I don't know whether it's the planting or I think partly it's the fact that we can't see all of this yeah, the clubhouse will be fine. And the car's in the car park. Doesn't matter, people will think the course is closed. Um, yeah, it was a little more claustrophobic than maybe it is, which I don't mind. Ooh, bounce over. Nope. The well placed bunker. Okay, now this is, if I'd gone left, I have no issue. I don't think. Ending up here. Not the place I want it to be. Just get over the false front. That'll do. Oh. Oh, that grabs from a long way away. Oh, yeah. I'd say that's pretty nicely defended. I still think I would play into that area a bit more. What the reason... I think you probably need to protect this. Oh. Twenty-seven. I think you need a little bit more layer. Oh, maybe not. I don't know. I need to come back to this one and play it again. I feel like if I hit my tempo off the tee, this is straightforward. And it's just hit down to the left. It probably needs a little bit more bite for a drivable four, but I think that might. I don't know. I may be wrong. Solid hole though. Okay. See, now we're getting a bit more quirky with what we're doing. Um, I do think your fairway width shrinks too dramatically on this hole. So you've given us, I like that you've given us all world to lay up on a par five. With these sorts of fairways, and like Burnham has, for example, 13 that kind of chokes down in places and then expands, and 15 which chokes down and then expands. 
but you'll notice it doesn't when it does choke down it tends to open up again in a pretty big way elsewhere so like 15 for example you've got all of that space short right of the green that you could play into um on 13 it does kind of open up beyond the dunes a little bit as well so things like that like where could you have expanded this fairway so if i hit into this bunker where are my layout options i'd probably be or even just visually i think it'd be a bit more pleasing like a bit more fairway out here would probably make the world of good um and it's not really a challenge the bunkers hole it's a hit to one side of them i think generally i'd look at hazard placement is it feels like we put the fairways down first and then shut put the bunkers down later um which is pretty common i like i really like the green and the sloping this works nicely for a long approach i think you can accomplish this a little bit neater with the sculpting so something i might have done would have been to go um and let's have a think of what's the course that does this oh rhino's one quite for 10 there's a back a par five on the back nine that has a similar sort of thing going on but you want to allow enough fairway up here and it not be so dramatic that you can leave yourself up here and then maybe chip back down it. Um, also would have lost the pond. Decisions were made. Decisions were made, yes. That feels like a good shot. This is a fun shot to hit though, like you've given it, I like the amount of helping slopes and hurting slopes you've given us on the greens have generally been really good. And newer guys tend not to get that right, particularly with Lynx courses. Oh, go on, I don't know, it looked good for a little while. Yeah, maybe, I'm less bothered by that. Besides your children. Hey, he was desperate to do more of them. I was just like, I've run out of things to get you to say. Uh, okay, 408. Love the green side. See, this bit of fairway works really well because it encircles the green a decent amount. Yeah, I like this green side a lot. Oh, we've got a crash. I was waiting for one of these. Yay! God, sort it out, 2K. Right, we can go to one sec. We can go back to the start screen for a second. Let's just chat here for a sec. No, 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 no. What is no, no, this no, 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 no. What is this okay, It wasn't that bad. Let's be nice to. Him. Um, I have no idea how we're going to manage this for YouTube purposes, but we'll figure something out. It now actually won't let me end the process for the game either. No, 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 no. What is this seesaw? Oh, quite. Uh, okay. It'd be quite nice if I could even end process. Oh, there we go. Yay. Right. So we're going to have to start up again in the back on the back nine and we get to play 10 again. Unfortunately, I'm not going to get to play technical difficulties. Would have been good. You know what? This bit can just stay in the VOD. If you're watching, if you're watching this on YouTube, my apologies. Don't blame me. Blame HB or 2K. Um, and yeah, I'm amazed I haven't had more, frankly. <laughs> Count of three. At least you got some light entertainment. Uh, thank goodness there are actually people around for this. Oh, can I resume round? It doesn't normally let me. Oh, I can resume round. Let's go back to here. Don't be like Matty. <laughs> it's the way he spits the name Matty out. Oh, Daddy. Right. Back we come. And the weather has changed quite significantly. Uh, I guess you could try to hit to this green, but I don't see why you would. I feel like it's a bit aggressively bunkered. You don't need the, this. is never coming into play for anyone, so I don't know why you're 
you need it. I think this one's cutting it maybe a little too much. With the camber, you're always ending up in it. But the hazard placement generally better than previous holes in the it's it, it's more in tune with the land. Oh, and I went to the one without the chat. Nailing this streaming stuff. Okay. Nine iron pitch shot. Also, obviously, the shot I want to hit. I do like your bringing the planting into the bunker here as well. That works nicely. That's always a good way of naturalizing something. Uh, the other side of the river looks a little empty. And given that you had brought in the coastline so much here, I wonder whether that's just a meter saving thing. Because we can't, I mean, we can't see really that water at all. At least not yet. Don't want to miss the part. Never aimed high enough. I would definitely say this is medium difficulty. It's not hard. I would, I do think your par three is very difficult, generally. Um, so this one again, for example, we're looking at another 220 yarder. And again, I don't really have a way of getting the ball close other than, like, even if I land here, I've got that kicker slope pushing us further right. I've got the world, I've got a small backstop here. So if I land it perfectly here, I might roll out, run back into that and end up short of the hole. If you've seen me play the game, that is unlikely. Pretty nicely. Again, I think your par threes are just too short, too long, generally. And again, if it's 220 yards, let's bunker it a little less. I would lose this one. More fairway around here. Stop and fairway out of it. I don't think I can hit a better shot than that. And you can see where I land it on the green, and like there's just not. There's not much room for error with that. I'll take a par. Okay, now we're back out on the water. Water on the left. And you're edging us closer to it with this. Get a better angle from We do get a better angle going this way. This slope here on the green feels really out of place. Kind of. It's not always, but everything I know. I, I'm never porting any of my PS4 courses. There's two of them, they were terrible. Um, although one of them also almost beat Chiza, so. Um, if everything should be going this way to make more sense, you don't really want it falling this way. And honestly, I think just tuck your green close to the water and like that can, simple sloping could be all you need here. Uh, I don't want to take on this side of the fairway that's mainly so i have to avoid trouble right left and a bit long as i feel if i go up here then i only need to, I only need to worry about going too far left yeah exactly almost with my second course i'm still like granted the judging was clearly terrible in that course i blame wes and jc But yeah, the word almost is doing a lot of heavy lifting in that sentence. Axel, that's too soon. We, d we don't joke about second places. Nobody likes that. Oh, I like the little... Okay. I find it... I guess it's a holiday let where they would all just be the same. It just looks kind of 
kind of odd that they're all exactly the same at the same orientation, but I guess that would make sense. It's cool, nice little feature. Hmm. You on CC in my mind. There's a part. Anyway, why would you want to win CC? Perfect timing. Right. Uh, I think we've got it. I think I've just about got away with it. So... One thing I'd say as well is you've had, this was similar to the one that was with the pond that was sort of outplay, I want to say seven, maybe seven or eight. Um, you have this side on green that did not totally dissimilar things. The danger of having greens that are perpendicular to the line of play is they can kind of take away any benefits playing to one side of the fairway to the other. You dug the bunker in here, I think you could do it a little bit more and just like a little, this is where links would be great, a little pot. But honestly, putting something on a 45 degree angle would be generally better. I think we're kind of going more lion's mouth, but with the angles we've got and how wide the fairway is and how the, the danger of the lion's mouth is if you make the green itself really wide, well, that means you're rarely actually going over the central bunker because you've made those angles so extreme. You kind of want to keep the green relatively narrow like have the so it does this sort of m shape sort of thing because that way you're almost always going over that little middle bunker um whereas this one i feel like i could have gone either way to this pin in it i mean the mound here works in a way to defend that it was a pretty open t shot don't know if i'm totally hitting what i intended to with that comment but give some ideas at least Probably up and over the little spine. Still haven't been able to hit anything remotely close. This path three looks beautiful. When you have framed stuff, when you've nailed your framing, you've absolutely nailed it. This looks really beautiful. Um, no. Nah. <laughs> oh, the, gr the green was doing so well until this bit. This bit is unnecessary and just, just make this green. I think the one thing I would take away from this with your par threes is like, it is absolutely fine to let people hit the green and like have a putt. Um, there's a hint at that. I mean, old autumn vibes, old autumn does some bits like this and that. It is plat ready. Um, and if you do go to, go to play old, old Alton Links and look at the second hole, that does something similar. There's a big dip, but there's ways to avoid it. And also that was made for the last game and I would have tweaked a lot of things. So big caveat applied to that. Let the golfer win sometimes. What pith he says. But it looks beautiful. And I love that flag silhouetted against the, against the water and the like, little inlet with just the right amount of planting out here really good this stuff not in your face at all like my view with planting is you don't want it to steal the show you want it to make everything like high together and like frame the golf hole beautifully you couldn't have done a much better job than this um i just think you needed a simple green complex and just like this can be a really good looking hole uh i don't know but it will be Oh, for the video or for the course? I don't know what he put as his course one. This will be the one I use here. It looks beautiful. Health. Yeah, and all I would say all of your par threes have just been the wrong side of penal, basically. Uh, well, they've just been the penal side of, like, scorable. Uh, this one's very open. Again, same... Oh, okay. Same kind of thing with the side on green, right? It does 
limit our angles a little bit, but it's okay. Um, I don't know how much I love the distance on this course. I guess you could possibly reach it downwind. But this feels like, as a green site, you want people to be taking this on, right? You want people to be going over the coast and, like, just bring your green down here, perch it just over the water, give us all this bailout room, because then there'll be more of it, lose the bunker, and just go, you know what, here's the green, you can all hit it. I probably bring the T forward a little bit as well. My view on waterside par fives are that the danger is all on the approach. Give, make sure people have enough club to hit it. So, look, Emory Beach 18, for example, you should be able to hit that green and go for it because, uh, yeah, it is. Uh, we saw it on a whole five, six, five, I think. But yeah, like, let people hang themselves with this. Like, let them have a go for this green and have water left and have water short. But by making this a three shot hole, there's no risk I'm ever going to go in this because I just can't, which is a real shame because you've taken away one of the most exhilarating shots we've got on the course. And I've got to lay way back because I don't trust myself being here, which is a different thing. Oh no. Ah, oh, nearly. Still, we'll get the blurp in a second. It's really trying to make me go in the water just to like disprove everything I've just said. See how to pissing hatch. Thanks for taking the low hanging fruit, Axel. Still made a really dull par. I just feel like that you had the green site right there. Sometimes it's a don't lick the gift horse in the mouth. And then the internal pond, which is suddenly right up against the water. So we, again, I think it's framed really nicely. If we're taking this isn't on its own, this looks really pretty again. However, we've just been up against the ocean and we've not, we've kind of avoided it. And then we've put a man-made sort of pond in the middle. And that's the one where you're getting me to hug the inside. Just look at where your natural features are and how you can use those. Love the green site, love the bunker. You've done this sort of shelf green thing really nicely overall. These have been your best green sites generally. Um, and I love the hill that it's banked into and the bunker positioning works really nicely as well. But yeah, I think when you've got the ocean and you're not really using that, don't you don't then need the pond that you use because it's like, well, why didn't when you do that when you had the the best possible natural feature go. Uh, that's a oh come on, we can maybe get a birdie. Not that I can read these greens at all. No. Nope. <laughs> Okay, and 18. So one, you've kind of got the spine at the back, which is doing this. I would, if you go back to Burnham, which is one you'd cited as an influence, you'll see, for example, around the... It's a hole in tea, yeah? It is, Roy, Roy, it is. Um, you'd see around like the sixth hole, for example, and that green, you've got a lot of mounds that kick the ball and feed the ball in. Um, partly that's feeding the ball in, but also it's kind of if you end up in one of those swales, like the practice green at Burnham, for example, you've got all of these mounds around it that you can bounce the ball off and roll it over. And it's like, do you cut it over? Do you chip it over? Do you flop it around the other side? Do you try and die it off the top and roll it on? Those sorts of mounds around this green would have done wonders for it, of just like allowing us to divert the ball rather than these runoffs both sides, which again, just kind of feel a little bit too harsh. Um, tee shots wise, I think we can do a little bit more strategically. It's kind of just, 
hit the fairway and then you play your approach shot. I would like to see a little bit more of encouraging us to hit certain sections of the fairway or play closer to certain hazards rather than the hazards being there for when we miss the fairway. Yeah, Royal County down 17. It was also blind. It was definitely a challenging course. Um, and we also had the crash in the middle, so it's gone as a playthrough, it's gone a little longer than anticipated. But that's fine. Yeah, I mean, it's no Fisher's Island 17, but we do what we can. Um, alrighty. I think my main critiques were pretty clear. Like, par 3 is generally overly penal. Um, I think you want to look at strategic bunkering generally. And, like, just friendliness and allowing the golfer to... Like, what's the shot you're encouraging people to play rather than the mishits you're penalising? So I think we're too much in the latter mindset at the moment of just, like, don't hit it here or else. It's like, well, what do you want to encourage them to do and what's the risk they're taking on if they're doing that? Um think you brought the ocean in too much and then used it comparatively too little uh, which is why those ponds I've mentioned don't quite come across as I think you'd want them to uh, what else but when you do frame stuff and the planting you have done looks fantastic um, 15 is an absolute stunner looks really really good there was part four on the front as well I thought that it might have been but it was either five or seven, I think seven. Oh no, or was it the five? It was the five. Uh it's a it whole eight. Uh sorry. Or three, perhaps, I think, on the front, maybe looked really, really good as well. Um the other thing I'd look at is just bringing in those undulations into the fairway a little bit more, uh, rather than always playing on flat land between the dunes. Um again, I'm gonna keep chucking Burnham and Barrow references at you, but look at them the mounding on the fifteenth, the second fairways. Like you've got so much there on the first fairway. You play it too far right, you're blind and hitting over something. Like You can build the third green's really quirky. Tenth tee shot is blind, and that's pretty quirky as well. Um, you've got 12 hitting up to that green by the church, 13 when you've got no idea where that's going. There's a lot of in features that you immediately remember from that course, and this was more kind of doing the whole seven on Burnham, late on Burnham which are a bit more pedestrian um, even though they're both good golf holes they're just they're the flat land that you kind of want to get away from um, but yeah I hope that helps there is a lot I liked um, and I think just go and go on a strategy deep dive like go and look up templates read everything you can do about them go and look at links courses and try and understand why the bunkers are where they are and like when you're playing other courses from this contest where do you want to hit the ball off the tee in order to have the best line into the green? Look at the hazards, like where have they put bunkers, why are the bunkers where they are, and how is that influencing how you're playing the shot, and where's the easy shot versus where's the challenging shot, and what does the easy shot leave you versus what does the challenging shot leave you. Uh, Golf Club Atlas, says Pithy says, is amazing. Uh, Fried Egg, as a website, is invaluable. Have a look at that as well. Um, both of those are brilliant. And the Fried Egg YouTube channel has a load of stuff on Donald Ruff's uh, templates as well. Like, those are all great. Um, just, yeah, go, do go down that road. Uh, there's a ton of fun stuff to find there. Anyway, a little bit longer than intended, but we can do one more still. Um, so I'm going to cut the stream and then we'll be right back. And don't listen to Patty. See you later.